Hello, I'm going to show you how to fit design elements on a page very simply, very intuitively. So let's get started. I have my standard guides. I have my layer called design. I'm going to select the A tool to initialize the direct selection tool. If you've seen my videos before, it's always a good app to get into. So we're going to get started with the pen tool. Now, again, the reason I initialized the A tool, because if you have a tool selected, if you have the this tool selected, you'll never see me going up here to a selection tool. It's a total waste of time. All Adobe products, with the exception of Dreamweaver, Flash does this, InDesign does this, Photoshop does this. If you hold down the Command key on Macintosh or a Control key, you can simply turn it into a selection tool. Select the object, select the object, select the object. If you hold down the Option key with the Command key, you can make a clone copy. So it's that type of thinking. So I'm going to go to my pen tool and create a simple shirt design. So here's my simple shirt design design. Okay, so we're going to fill this shirt in with, let's pick this orange color. Okay, so I'm going to go to my O key, which is my transformation tool, reflecting tool, pick a point to reflect from, reflect over, hold down the option key to make a clone copy, the shift key to constrain it, make sure you let go of your mouse hand first, let go of the mouse hand first. So I'm going to directly select these two anchor points and down arrow. Now, how far it goes down is dependent on how far your preferences are set. Command K. I mine set up for a quarter inch. So I directly select these two anchor points and join. Object join. Object path. Path join. Command J. Then I select these two objects and join. Command J. Now, that's not the objective of today's video. The objective of today's video, let's say your client wants to have several colors of this design, plus they want to have so many on the page. As an example, let's say they want to have six across the page. Well, it's obvious right now. I'm going to hit the tab key to hide the palettes. Tab key hides the palettes. Tab key shows the palettes. Tab key hides the palettes. So it's obvious at this size that this is not going to fit across five across on the page. So we're just going to go to the scale tool, as for scale, and hit the return key. We're going to arbitrarily scale this down to say 25%. Okay. Now, this will obviously fit five across, so this is way too small. Well, we're going to fix that. So let's start with this size as an example, as for scale. Let's make this 50%. Okay. I'm going to put this in the corner. Now, the objective is to have five objects from here to here. So let's just get the five objects. First of all, hold the command key, select the object, hold down the option key to make a clone copy, hold down the shift key to constrain it. There's object two, command D, command D, object transform, repeat transformation. Any type of movement, rotation, reflecting scale is a form of transformation. I can repeat this by hitting command D. There's two, command D, there's I'm sorry, there's three, duh, four, and five. Now, select all. Now, I want to scale from this point. So I go to my scale tool. I want to scale from this point. So I pick the point to scale from, go all the way up here on the top of the keyboard, the top of the, paste, the uh, document, hold down the shift key and constrain, and there's my five across. Five across. If I want 10 across, I make 10 and scale it. 12 across, make 10, make 12 and scale, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Now, another technique for this is I can hold down the, the option key, scale tool, I'm in the scale tool, option key, click. So now I can start scaling at 90%. Command D, not 90%. Command D, not 90%. Command D, 90%. Command D, another 90%. Now, once you get close to your objective, you can hold down the option key, click, and let's start doing one point increments. 99%. Command D, Command D, Command D, and nut chat right into place. That's just an alternative to clicking and dragging. Now, here's my objective. Make a change, save a change. Could have to get into Command S. Make changes, save changes. Now, my client wants to have variation of colors between this color and let's pick this purple color. So here's my 
purple color. Here's my original color. So I want to have different variations of these colors. So very simply, I can select all, go to edit, the edit colors, and I have a shortcut set up for this. The shortcut I'll cover in a separate lesson, but I have a custom shortcut for this. Blend horizontally, command shift nine. Edit, edit colors, blend horizontally. So I can select all. If I don't want to see anchor points, command H. I see anchor points, command H. Shows anchor points, then command shift nine. Blends horizontally. So now I can just command H, hides the edges. So I can drag these down. There's two, three, four, command D, command D, command D, command D. Select all, I'll put this in place. Save the file, email it, publish it to a site, show the client the final piece. Now, that's going to go horizontally, but let's say we want to have colors that go vertically. So I'm going to make this green, and I'm going to make this yellow, and I'm going to make this red. So I set up a keyboard shortcut, I'm going to select this, edit, define colors, blend vertically, command shift eight. There's a vertical blend. Blend vertically, command and shift eight. Blend vertically, command and shift eight. Simple production technique, simple to make changes, simple if you know how to do it. Thank you. Subscribe to my YouTube channel, thinkillustrator.com. Thinkillustrator.com if you're in New York City, West 57th Street, thinkillustrator.com for expert Adobe training.